السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نسلی علیہ رسول کریم اما بعد لائک آئی واز انٹروڈیوسڈ مائی ٹوڈے از مائی ٹاپک از ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ زہد وچ از دی سیلف ڈینائل اور ڈیٹیچنگ یور سیلف فرام دا ورلڈی ڈیزائرس سو اٹ از انڈیڈ ون آف دا کوالٹیز آف آف مریدس Uh, that they have to inculcate the, the quality of Zohud. Uh, but more than that, it is the basic requirement to be a murid, to be a salik in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attain this quality of Zohud. Uh, Zohud works as a backbone in all of your efforts towards attaining nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have all other qualities of being a salik and attaining nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you don't have the quality of Zohud in you, you are not able to attain that nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what is Zohud? Zohud, in simple words, is detaching yourself from the extra desires of this world. The basic requirements are given have to be fulfilled by everybody in this world but anything you wanting anything beyond that like wanting ex surplus things in your life and indulging over indulging yourself in those desires and addressing all those luxurious desires in your heart and mind and always working towards them is prohibited and this is against Zohud. So Zohud is basically uh, committing your, yourself to the bare minimum in this world which is just enough for you to pass a comfortable life in this world uh, without which will not uh, distract you from uh, attaining the higher goal which is the attaining nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, Quran Majid, uh, Furqan Hamid clearly you know points at this fact uh, in one of the beautiful ayat لِكَيْلَا تَأْسَوْ أَلَا مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ You should not grieve over what is lost from you point uh, pay attention to this fact Allah is guiding us in this world you should not f grieve over anything that has been lost from you nor you should rejoice in what has been given to you you remain indifferent to these things which are coming and going in from your life uh, you know in uh, uh, in other beautiful ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points at the fact uh, that life is uh, in this world is nothing but a fleeting enjoyment it's a very short and passing pleasure that comes to you and it will be taken away from you so don't put all your heart and soul in this temporary uh, mode of uh, enjoyment which is going to vanish from your life soon <coughs> one of the beautiful hadith one of the beautiful ahadith of, uh, uh, among the, the pools of ahadith is, uh, uh, is the narration of Sayyidina Umar anhu, when he once uh, went to visit the Hujra Mubarak in the room, blessed room of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He found Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam laying on a very hard mat which was m made of a bark of a tree and some uh, straw of the tree. So looking at that, Sayyidina Umar Razila Anho got very upset and he expressed his wish and desire, Ya Rasulullah, uh, how nice would it be if you had some softer and finer sheet on your bed. Upon hearing that, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, uh, O Umar, what this world has got to do with me? My example in this world is like that of a traveler who is just passing by and he got a chance to rest in a shade of a tree for a little while. He rested there and then he moved on. He just abandoned the whole world. So he again pointed out to the fact that all these things are a passing pleasures for us. Other hadith uh, came uh, you know, to my mind. A man came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was curious about getting the love of Allah and the love of, of this dunya, of the people of this dunya. So he asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell me of some, some action that if I perform will cause Allah to love me and also will cause all these people around me to love me. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised him, uh, oh man, if you are indifferent to this world, Allah will love you. And if you are indifferent to the possessions of these people, these people will start loving you. 
So a Zahid, this is the definition of Zahid, that he, that he is indifferent, he is not moved by the possessions of other people. Somebody owns luxurious things in the life, you are not moved by that. You are working towards a better and a higher goal than him. He is just contented on that small kingdom that he has acquired in this world, which he is going to lose anyway. You are not moved by that. So Rasulullah said that if you want to get the love of these people, you know, you should be indifferent, you should not pay any attention or you know, not give any importance to what they possess. Third of these, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world, He and He ordered the, this earth. Listen carefully, this is very beautiful and important. That Allah, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world, He ordered the earth. That, listen, if, uh, if somebody serves me, like Allah is telling the earth, if somebody uh, serves me, serve him. And if somebody is serve you, make him your servant. So it's up to us. Like if we want to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the entire universe will be will come in our favor and it will start to help us out, right? And it will become our servant instead of us serving it and become a servant for uh, this world. <coughs> There are big names in, uh, in the line of Zohad, right? And you have heard some of them. One of them is Imam Hassan Basri. He was a great Zahid of his time. Ibrahim bin Adam, you know, he's one of the other contemporary uh, Zahid of his time. Well, above all, the, the leader of all Zohad was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, who, uh, who was given the chance to, to, to have the whole entire kingdom and the mountains and full of gold and everything with him when he would move around. But he he shunned that, you know, he abandoned that and he, he, uh, he preferred poverty over wealth, right? So he, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, is, the, is the king and the leader of all Zuhad. Uh, even him, uh, he, he, would, uh, he would also adorn good clothes, you know, especially on special occasions when other, you know, people would come and visit him from other delegates uh, of the world. Uh, he would adorn himself at the time of Eid. He would adorn himself at the time of uh, uh, special occasions. Uh, so he would not completely shun this world, but he just tried to, you know, refocus our mind so that we could just, uh, you know, focus towards a better and higher goal. Um, Talking about the, 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 the station of Zuhud, the maqam is Zuhud, it is agreed upon by most of the Sufi uh, people in the world that there are seven major stations or maqamat uh, which a Sufi and a Salik has to go through to attain nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maqam is Zuhud is one of them. Uh, the other, you know, very important stations which are all agreed upon by all Sufis are maqam e Tawbah, the station of Tawbah and repent repentance, uh, the second Second station is maqam e uh, the station of the fear of the Lord himself, not fear of the uh, not fear of the hellfire, but the fear of Lord that if we don't follow him uh, fully, we may lose him uh, forever. Uh, then the third is maqam e zuhud that we are, that is under discussion right now. Uh, the other uh, station and maqam is maqam e fakr. It's a um, it's a station of poverty. Uh, you know that the 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 slave uh, completely uh, surrenders himself uh, to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is uh, happy with the fakr that Allah has sent upon him. Then uh, next is the maqam sabr the station of sabr which is again a very very important station and it is a station of steadfastness that uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for Allah's will he remains steadfast upon whatever circumstances befall him. Then the sixth one is the maqam tawakkul or the station of uh, uh, trust and surrendering totally to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally maqam e raza where the person has totally submitted himself to the raza of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Hazrat Sayyidina Bayazid Bastami rahimahullah ta'ala he is again one of a very big names in uh, Sufi lineage and also in uh, Zuhad among Zuhad. Uh, uh, once upon a time, uh, a person asked him, uh, Ya Shaykh, have you ever been rendered speechless? Has, ever, has anybody ever made you speechless? He said, yes, one time it happened so that I was completely speechless. What happened was that I was in Balakh and at, in, in that city, uh, a person, uh, a young fellow asked me, uh, Ya Shaykh, uh, what is Zuhud? 
So, Sheikh explained him that Zuhud is that you remain patient when you, uh, that you, that you are grateful when you receive something and you remain patient if you don't receive anything. Upon hearing this, that young fellow told a Sheikh, Ya Sheikh, this level of Zuhud is even present among our dogs in Balakh. For us, the level of Balakh, the, the level of Zuhud is that if we don't get anything, we remain thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we get something, we give it away. This is the power of Zuhud and this was the, this was the level of Zuhud that was being practiced by our forefathers. And Hazrat Bayezid Bastami says that that was the point that made me speechless in my life. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal Azirullah Anho uh, explains three stages of Zuhud. It, this is important to know. Don't be dis disappointed by the fact that we are not, uh, we are not, uh, we are not uh, applying Zuhud in our life. No, Alhamdulillah, to some degree we are all applying Zuhud. Now, if when you go and hear about these stages, you will come to know how. So, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal Azirullah Anho has explained three stages of Zuhud. The first stages of Zuhud or abstinence is abandoning haram from your life, which Alhamdulillah we are all striving for, which, are, which we are all doing it. Alhamdulillah. So this is also called the Zuhud of Awam. This is the Zuhud of, uh, the Zuhud of common people. Next comes the Zuhud, uh, Zuhud of the religious elite, Zuhud of Khawas, you know, Khawas people. Though th this is the Zuhud and abstinence of those people who are even trying to st and striving to stay away from even halal things, halal, halal surplus things. I mean, they are allowed and they are using it, utilizing it uh, in, in appropriate amounts, but they are not indulging and over indulging in wasteful activities in acquiring those halal things and then wasting them away and third is the Zuhud of Arifin this is for those people who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this in in this level of Zuhud they are even abandoning whatever distracts them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even from the halal activities they are restricting themselves from so that they are not distracted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for one minute so Alhamdulillah, in some level we are, we are practicing Zuhud, but our efforts should be to strive for higher and higher degree until we reach the level of Arifin. So now how to correlate it with the modern times. Zuhud is the antidote. This, this um, practice in Tasawwuf of Zuhud is the antidote to modern hyper-consumerism. We are attracted to, to accumulate more and more wealth, you know, devices, uh, things, you know, our possessions. Uh, we are not contented on uh, accumulating one or two pair of shoes. We, are, we have to buy 10 pair of shoes, which I'm seeing among teenagers and, you know, even, you know, elderly people that they have number of shoes, number of watches, number of glasses, number of clothes and stuff like that, which is over and beyond their needs. So this is hyper-consumerism and this is basically consuming us away from the, 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 the bigger goal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to have this iman that Allah is the uh, source of all strengths. These things, these devices, these uh, you know, modern things are not the sources of strength. Only when Allah wills, Allah puts the strength in these things. So don't get yourself consumed in acquiring the things. You may see that whenever, whenever there's a time to launch the new device or new shoes or new cars. There's long, long, long lines outside their uh, vendors. Uh, and that is just consuming away the, 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 the humanity and they're wasting away their times and, you know, energies and money without, you know, without any extra gain. So, if we want to really acquire the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our utmost duty is to suppress our evil inclinations uh, that, uh, you know, which incline us towards attaining dunya. Uh, one important aspect in judgment is that this, uh, the, the quality of zuhud is a matter of your internal heart. So don't make judgment on other people just by looking at their worldly possessions. You don't know what their heart is telling them about, right? Their heart may be full of zuhud. Maybe they are doing it to serve other people. Maybe they are accumulating that wealth to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in the ways that you don't know. So you and we cannot make any judgment on other people just by looking at their wealth. We are not supposed to be jealous. We are not supposed to be, um, to be judgmental on them.
uh, the zuhud is a purely strictly a matter of our internal hearts <coughs> now interesting question is it possible to like we were i was just discussing is it possible to be zahid uh, to have zuhud and disinclination towards the world with uh, while owning the properties in this world so Hazrat Sufyan Sori says, uh, Sufyan Sori Rahmatullah says, yes, it is possible to, to, to have zuhud in your heart while still attaining properties and enjoying the worldly life. How? The condition is that you should remain patient in case you lose those properties and that wealth, right, in times of tests. And you remain grateful when you are getting all those things granted to you. Uh, this, to the same question, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal Rahmatullah alayhi, says also, yes, it is, it is possible that you remain, uh, you remain Zahid and you, you, you attain Zuhud while owning all that property and the wealth in your life, provided that, you know, that money, when that money increases, you are not happy and when that money decreases, you are not happy, uh, you are not sad. You know, you are indifferent to whatever comes your life, it comes and goes. This is the fleeting nature of the world. So, you can own the world, but the world should not own you. That's the message of Zuhud. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice Zuhud in our lives and better our lives. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.